sports in this event, it's hard for him to to do that solo. If he was gonna go and never come back, and I think that's what I thought he was gonna do when he first took off. He was just gonna you know grind it out the next 16 laps. And if he was to do that and he hold off, you know, props to him. We were willing, I think, sacrifice it. But when he started doing the searches, we realized that he wasn't gonna go get away because, you know, we picked it up. We just didn't cover the search. We ran pretty consistent pace that allowed us to keep him the same distance. But once it was inside of a 2K, you couldn't really take the chance. So that's why I kind of creeped up on him and I uh, stayed tight. And when he took off about a mile to go, I was right on him. And you know, he can hold off a mile to go. So that's why I got up to that early. No, because you know, like I said, it's kind of like um, the US 5000 meter trials when Galen took off. The whole crew stayed back, just knowing that, like, if you keep it in a certain distance, and when you go, you're gonna bring him because it's it's kind of like you know, Tour of France. You got the chase group, and you're allowed to catch up and close the gap on him. So that was the kind of scenario that I had in my head when we went. We were gonna go hard and get him. Chile seemed kind of frustrated that no one wanted to push the pace. Hey, every man is strategy. For me, it's slower than the better. Because if you ask me personally, I think. I had, I had a great confidence in myself that I had the best kick in the, in the group. So I said, if he won 33 minutes and he came down to the last K, I was ready to run 222. So that was the kind of mentality I was getting ready for when, when I turned out it was going to be a slow, uh, slow race. Do you think you're officially a 10K runner now? Or no, no. I'm still, I'm still a, a better K, uh, better in the 5K. It just, you know, the 10K, you got to do it. It's uncomfortable with race. Um, it's a long ways to go. So the chance of you, something going wrong, you have you know, the greater odds. So, but I got to, you know, if I'm going to be a world class in both events, I got to start doing both. So that's why I'm kind of here this weekend. So you're going to run five tomorrow? Absolutely, yeah. Take us through that last lap. I mean, Chris took off with 600. I was surprised. I mean, he, I thought he was going to settle after 200, but he never did. And he kept pressing and kept pressing. And I, just, I respect the man, so I just tucked in. And I just said, wait, 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 wait. And then a 250 to go, I was just like, now or never. And I just took off. Uh, but it was fast. I mean, I don't know what was split, but I'll tell you that we were going all out pretty much from 600 to the belt. But 600, really? Yeah, because Chris yeah, ended up Chris, fading a bit. Chris but, took off. Yeah. I don't know what happened. It looked yeah. like, but once, because we didn't really pass him until almost yeah, 200 to go. So, I think there was like surges that Tanya did where he went really hard for 200 with the four laps to go and like stopped. And how did that affect you aerobically and mentally? You know? And then, like I said, I felt good today. So, <laughs> for me, when we did that, it was like, in a way, it was smooth because you got to get full strides. Where when we were going so slow, you were just kind of chopping, chopping, chopping. When he took off, the, it was kind of like a lot of open up the legs and kind of lactate, clear lactate, you know, kind of stuff like that. So it was cool for me. I didn't have no problem with it. What does it mean to win this for you? It's awesome. Uh, you know, not, not many people get to win U.S. titles. And the U.S. Championship year, um, to be able to make my third, you know, world-class event is awesome. So um, I really want it because I, you know, I can kind of glance the screen and I see Shadrach and Leonard were coming hard, and I just last, you know, 40 meters was just nothing but all. So uh, to win it was awesome. And you know, came short in this event last year, so it kind of had a redemption. So. How's it feel to break Rupp Street? Uh, hey, the, the man done. I mean, the man. You know, his record speaks for himself. You know, he came and said congrats, and I appreciate it. As you know, we're close to him. Uh, but, you know, at, this, at some point, U.S. distance is getting so tough. Like, I you two years ago, probably, you know, he's so confident that he would have just gotten wide away with it. But today, it's a different story. So, uh, you know, to put a stop to that, it's nice. Anytime you get a chance to stop somebody from doing something even greater, it's nice because, you know, you're being a very competitive. Yeah, what do you think about somebody winning eight of these in a row? It's tough. Like I said, you got to depend on which uh, um, feel you do it. Um, I know he has some good things. He went against Ritz and Polanski, but for me tonight it was tough. I um, mean, I think there was, like I said, six people had their standards, and I figured it was going to come down to a six-man race. And I think you guys watched the race. You can probably say it was a six-man race all the way to the line. So uh, I knew I had to respect everybody and come in, and it was going to be a dog fight. So. If you were to make the 5K team, were you going to try to double? Hell yeah. Hey, uh, absolutely, yeah. So no scratching the time. No scratch. Coming back. Good job. Yeah,